You still working at Jack in the Box? Not anymore, baby. I'm with the band. Here are 10 things you should know before eating at Jack in the Box. Since it's not as widespread as some other fast food chains, there are things that people might not know, and we're here to change that. It came up with so many classics. Classics are classics for a reason. As much as Jack in the Box can often be overlooked nowadays because of the multitude of fast food restaurants available, we owe a great deal to the chain. Yes, it pioneered the drive through but it also created some of the most iconic, beloved menu items we all know and love today. Jack in the Box has basically always been ahead of the curve. For instance, it was the chain that invented two of the most popular items, all-day breakfast and portable salads. Unlike some other big fast food joints that took forever to offer their breakfast all day. We're looking at you, Ronald. Jack in the Box didn't have that problem. It introduced the first version of a breakfast sandwich to the fast food industry in 1969 and never looked back on its decision to serve that bad boy all day long. Breakfast? As for the portable salad, it was introduced to the menu in 1982. Despite the famous menu items we see from other fast food players, Jack in the Box has also come up with its own classics. The Jumbo Jack, which is the chain's flagship hamburger, was once considered one of the largest burgers in the industry. Introduced in 1971, the recipe had remained untouched until 1999 when the special sauce was nixed for ketchup. In other words, Jack in the Box did a lot for modern fast food restaurants, so why not highlight its accomplishments? There used to be a boy band. I'm starting a new boy band, and there's a place in it for Bart. By now, you've probably realized that Jack in the Box likes to think, well, outside of the box, especially when it comes to standing out from the crowd. With so many fast food restaurants offering similar menu items, the chain had to take things even further. A living and breathing mascot wasn't enough, so they had to take the next logical step, introduce their own actual boy band. Yes, you heard that right. A fast food restaurant put together a boy band, singing and dancing to original songs. But all for commercial purposes, of course. Named the Meaty Cheesy Boys, the band saw the light of day back when Backstreet Boys and NSYNC were in their prime. The TV commercials ran from 1999 to 2001 and featured their greatest hits like Ultimate Cheeseburger. While it may sound like a bad joke at first, the band was still kind of successful. <laughs> You serious? So much so, in fact, they were even invited to perform at the 1999 Billboard Music Awards. Made up of five members, EJ, TK, JT, TJ, and the other EJ, the meaty cheesy boys were all about creating memories and arguably catchy songs. As for the name of the band, well, we're not so sure about the meaty part, but the cheesy one, on the other hand, it holds a Guinness World Record. I'm here to break a world record. It's no easy task to earn a place in the Guinness World Record book, and yet Jack in the Box was able to achieve this feat back in 2015. But rather than holding the record for the biggest burger or greasiest meal, it holds one for the world's largest coupon. Probably not what you were expecting, but still pretty darn impressive. The gigantic coupon was more than 80 feet tall and 25 feet wide, which, to put things into perspective, is about eight stories high. It was not the kind of coupon you could keep in your wallet, that's for sure. That's huge! The only issue with this massive piece of paper hanging from a building was the question of redeeming it. In order to qualify for the record, the coupon had to be redeemable in some way. So Jack and 12 other people paraded the coupon through the streets of Los Angeles to the nearest Jack in the Box location. Obviously, it wouldn't fit through the door, so they took it to the drive through and voila! The coupon was for the then new Buttery Jack Burger, a quarter pound burger with garlic herb butter melted on top and allowed customers to enjoy the buy one get one free promotion. All you needed to do was take a screenshot of the coupon and present it at the register. How it got so popular. 
I love an origin story. Founded in San Diego, California by Robert Oscar Peterson, the first Jack in the Box location was opened in 1951, making the chain 70 years old. With cheap food, like 18 cent burgers, and a lot of determination, the chain eventually expanded all over the United States, with a concentration on the West Coast. When it first opened, the chain was mostly focused on offering better quality drive through services. In fact, Jack in the Box is the one to thank for the modern, effective drive through we all enjoy today. Even though drive throughs were already a thing by the time Jack in the Box came around, Peterson was the one to revolutionize the experience with his forward thinking. It's actually a really great idea. He incorporated another drive through window, a two-way intercom system, which he implemented at every location once he figured out how successful it was, as well as adding a giant clown on the roof to greet its customers. This new version proved to offer a much faster drive through service, and over time, it became the new norm. The mascot has a whole life. Man to man, mascot to mascot. These days, any respectable fast food chain is going to have a mascot to represent its brand. Think about McDonald's and Burger King. Even Taco Bell had its chihuahua back in the day. Obviously, Jack in the Box had to come up with its own mascot. However, they didn't do anything halfway. Instead of simply introducing a friendly face to the world and leave it at that, the chain went all in and gave their mascot an entire backstory. According to the company, Jack, the mascot, is nearly seven feet tall without the hat weighs 195 pounds, and was born on May 16th. Ah oh, yes, your mysterious backstory. Already a pretty extensive description for a mascot, but the chain didn't stop there. He's also fluent in English and Spanish, has a wife and a son, and a very interesting family history. His big ping pong ball-like head is apparently a kind of genetic mutation that only affects male members of his family. Plus, how many fast food mascots do you know that have run for president twice and won? Indeed, during the 1996 presidential election, Jack beat out Bill Clinton Clinton and Bob Dole in a national, independent, virtual poll. Pins and bumper stickers that read, Back Jack for President, and Don't Blame Me, I Voted for Jack, were even released. Serving as the company's fictional founder and CEO, Jack is definitely a frontrunner when it comes to best fast food mascots. The tacos are something else. Taco Tuesday. Taco Tuesday. There just seems to be something so weirdly addicting about Jack in the Box's tacos. For some reason, you can't just have one. You always need to get a bunch. And at two for a dollar, you can get more than just a little bang for your buck. But whether you can't get enough of the crunchy treat or you despise them, there's no denying the effect they've had on people. On the menu since the 1950s, the greasy, meat-filled, crispy tortillas have gathered quite the cult following, and the recipe has remained untouched. Even though they've been called disgusting, or even wet envelopes of cat food by detractors, the tacos are still a fan favorite today, and they sell like hotcakes. In fact, just over 1,000 tacos are eaten each minute, which adds up to a total of 554 million per year. Taco time! I hope it pleases you as the head desires. So much for a love-hate relationship. Several celebrities have even come forward and declared their love for the tacos, notably Selena Gomez. The chain uses 20 million pounds of corn to make the tortillas and 600 million packets of taco sauce every year to make one of its best-selling items. Made with beef, lettuce, a slice of American cheese, and hot sauce, the Jack in the Box tacos cost next to nothing to make, which is why the company can afford to sell them for so cheap. The ads have been weird. Why the commercials on? We talked earlier about how Jack has been given a complete backstory and how he's been reigning over the chain for years. He began appearing in numerous commercials, which were starting to become more and more ridiculous as time passed. Forget the fact that he was a talking clown with a giant round head walking around, living life. It's mostly what he was doing in some of the ads. After his comeback from the controversial commercial where he blows up the company boardroom, people noticed that Jack had a very different attitude. 
ensued. Indeed, he was no longer afraid to speak his mind and intimidate the competition. From beating someone up for talking badly about the chain to fighting with Martha Stewart over a sandwich, there were no signs of Jack taking it easy. Really? You're not just saying that because I could snap your arm like a twig? No! The scenarios were also becoming ever stranger. He was even hit by a bus in a 2009 Super Bowl ad. Throughout the various commercials, we got to know Jack Moore, as well as his wife, Cricket, his son, Jack Jr., his parents, and even his mullet-growing cousins from Philly. Jack Box will never cease to amaze the public, that's for sure. Jack in the Box antenna toppers are a thing. My antenna's fine. It's just fine. People tend to want to show off the things they love. Usually it's bands, movies, or sports teams. But apparently fast food restaurants also have their fair share of dedicated fans ready to shout their appreciation from the rooftops. Ever since Jack made his long-awaited return, merch became available for purchase, and people jumped on the occasion immediately. Countless Jack in the Box themed items were sold, like Pez dispensers in 1999, bendable figurines, and bobbleheads. But weirdly, enough, the most popular was, by far, the antenna balls. The little toppers were first given out as freebies with a burger promotion, but over the years, they've become much more valuable, especially to collectors. The toppers also went through some changes for holidays and special occasions, making these the more sought-after items. From party hats to earmuffs and football helmets, Jack was ready for any eventuality. Be ready for anything. According to the chain, it estimates that it's given out more than 32 million Jackbox antenna balls to customers since 1995. Seeing Jack's face everywhere was funny at first, but it quickly started to creep people out as they felt they couldn't escape the mascot. Jack now seemed to be everywhere. Jack in the Box and Calories Mmm, only 35 calories. <laughs> It shouldn't come as a surprise to hear that the food at Jack in the Box isn't exactly the most healthy thing you can get. Let's just say that serving healthy meals isn't any fast food restaurant's forte. However, even if healthy living isn't a motto for most chains, it doesn't mean that it shouldn't matter at all. At Jack in the Box, they serve the typical fast food fare like burgers, fries, and chicken sandwiches. And while they're all very good, they also come with an impressive calorie count. Let's take the milkshakes, for example. They might seem like innocent little treats at first, but one large shake can set you back as as much as a thousand calories. And that's not counting the whipped cream you put on top. And for a regular morning breakfast fix, the Grande Sausage Breakfast Burrito has 1,040 calories, which is really not the best way to start your day. Even the chicken nuggets are guilty of packing way too many calories. By ordering a 20-piece, you're also getting 950 calories. It's just so easy to get carried away when it all tastes so good. But you should always be aware of what you eat and just how much of it you're eating. If you're looking to cut back on your calorie intake, you might want to steer clear from Jack in the Box. Major E. coli outbreak. G. coli. I mean, E. coli? Fast food restaurants are no stranger to health outbreaks. When thinking about E. coli problems, most people will probably recall the very high-profile cases that happened a couple of years back at Chipotle. However, as it turns out, it wasn't the first restaurant to be plagued by a major outbreak. Back in 1993, Jack in the Box was responsible for an E. coli outbreak that happened at 73 of the restaurant's locations. It was first noticed in Washington, but soon enough, residents from Idaho, California, and and Nevada all began to report several cases. It left four people dead, including two children, more than 700 people critically ill, and led to 171 hospitalizations. The epidemic was quickly traced back to the undercooked patties that were served, and according to the United States Agricultural Department and local health officials, all of this could have been avoided if the burgers had been cooked to an internal temperature of 155 degrees Fahrenheit instead of the previous federal standards of 140 degrees. This was one of the worst and most tragic events in the company's history and nearly doomed the chain altogether. Thankfully, though, Jack in the Box was able to come back from this tragedy and avoid any other health scares. No coupon required for more great videos. Just tap or click and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.